Hey guys, so it's a sunny little Saturday over here in the Seattle area, and uh, I figured it's a great time to do another Music Monday for Monday, even though it's Saturday now, but it'll be posted Monday, whatever. Uh, back there, I got a new pair of speakers, which is pretty fun. Just traded them yesterday, and I figured it'd be a great pair of speakers to kind of do a little bit of time traveling for the album that we're gonna listen to from Tool. Um, so let's go check out the speakers really quick, and then we'll get into the whole Music Monday spit. So these are purely made for just, <laughs> Just a little bit of fun, basically. They're about 30 inches tall, um, so not the not the tallest. Actually, you can see one over there. Um, you can see kind of how high that is. It's not the not the biggest thing in the world. Uh, six inch right here. I think this is a two and a half right here, and then the infamous or famous, depending on who you ask, Emit Tweeter. And this is from a brand you may have heard of called Infinity. Now these are actually in really good condition, except for one little bitty thing. There's a little bit of a stress fracture right here where the guy who actually refoamed these, it, it seems like he tightened them too tight. He said it was there when he got them, but I kinda don't believe him. I think he tightened them too tight. The imaging is fantastic on these things. Like it's really, really good. Strings are great. They're not super bassy, but the surprising part is how efficient these things are. They're crazy, crazy efficient. We're gonna go ahead and plug these bad boys up and uh, I'll see you guys in just a sec. This brand, I don't recommend this brand. It's not very good. It's uh, Bellingham Coffee Roasters. Uh, uh-uh. At least not this, this blend, it's, it's not good at all. So the reason why I say I'm going back in time is because when I was a kid, my dad introduced me to a whole bunch of different rock bands, Alien Ant Farm, Primus, Tool, System of a Down, bands like that. And over time, as time has gone on, I've kind of either seen those bands go downhill in terms of quality or, or just, you know, they don't make the same sounds that they used to. And Tool is an interesting uh, kind of exception to that rule. I think their last album was made in 2006 if I'm not mistaken, I'd have to look that up to verify it, but they really haven't made much music uh, in recent years at least. But I was raised on those guys, so when this came out, uh, life has been getting in the way of me actually checking it out and listening to the whole album. I've heard a couple songs here and there, but I haven't like sat down and listened to it. And it was great to kind of get a little bit of a blast from the past and go check it out. Um, and I'm very impressed, I have to say that. Uh, from just from like an emotional standpoint, it just brought back a lot of old memories. That being said, my name is Josh, and this is Music Mondays. The album Inoculum from Tool is comprised of 10 songs. There are a few two minute songs and a few like 10 plus minute songs. One of them is even like, I think, like 15 minutes and 30 seconds long. There's some long songs on here. And one of the things that I've always loved about Tool, uh, and part of why I consider them probably not the greatest, but definitely in the consideration of one of the greatest rock bands of all time, is just how unique sounding they are. And one of the, the best aspects of this whole album is that they've been able to kind of maintain their sound color palette, so to speak. You could mix these songs up with songs of the past from Tool, and they'd blend right in. Um, yet they've been able to do this with better recording quality than ever, and they they always seem to care about the quality of their recordings to begin with, but now it's even better. Um, like just super, super great. Some of the best recordings for like a hardcore rock band, uh, even by today's standards. Very, very impressive stuff. Their drummer, Danny Carey, has always just been like, just such a good drummer. He's not the fastest, he's not like the most technical, but just something about the beats that he's able to create uh, to me is amazing. And I know I'm kind of gushing over this, but I, it, it's so cool to see something like this come up from a band that you have such a distinct kind of impression of and they're able to maintain that impression just flawlessly. So Numa is the second song in this album, but that's kind of where it really starts. I think that's like the most familiar for me. That was the song that was able to kick my emotions into gear and bring back all those memories to start with. It's an amazing song. And one of the things that you'll see through this whole album is that like with the long songs, and this Numa is a long song, is that even though it's long, most of their songs do a relatively good job of ebbing and flowing whilst growing through that entire, like they, they tend to progress um, there's a few counterexamples in this album, but they tend to progress with uh, just this slow build, but it's not boring. It's not ever feeling like it's massively drawn out or just buying time for the sake of buying time. And so they're really, really good at that. Numa for me is highly recommended. Now, Invincible is another great track, another long track. Um, and this is just classic rock, hardcore tool 
sound, right? This has a relatively repetitive kind of head bumping beat to it, where it's kind of like you can really get into the rhythm and really feel the music, and I love that. There's enough nuance and kind of fluctuation within the song to keep the 12-minute runtime fairly interesting. I think right about 6.50, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it starts to get really crazy with this awesome breakdown, and I just love that shit. I wish, I wish, I wish I could play it for you without like the risk of being copyrighted. But uh, but go check it out. It, it, it's awesome. Then you have descending, and descending is just all right. But I kind of want to highlight like the drumming aspect. This is really where, uh, well, I mean the whole the whole album is impressive from a drumming perspective. But you really notice it on descending. I just with some of the other aspects of that song were a little bit more forward and a little bit better and more upbeat than just the drums, but impressive for drums nonetheless. Actually, real quick side note. Um, I, I've never talked about this, which is so surprising because I know there's a lot of musicians who watch my channel. Um, I know this photographer whose name is L-J, it's E-L-L-E-J-A-Y-E, -E, and she's a, a musician and primarily circles around drumming photography, and her photography is awesome. Like, it's so, so good. Uh, she's an old friend of mine. I, I'll leave the top link in the description down below is gonna be to her website. Check her out, man. She's just an incredible photographer. If you're a musician and you want some dope ass shots, she's among the best in the game. And I, I mean that, her shots are awesome. Okay, that's enough of a plug for me. The next song is Chocolate Chip Trip. And that song deserves a, an award just based off of the name. That's such a funny name. I don't know why, just something about, kind of reminds me of some like the, the, Primus names, like the really interesting uh, Primus names, like Mr. Mud. And again, in this song, Danny Carey comes out with a pretty awesome drum breakdown. But what's really impressive about this song is the imaging. It's a great imaging test. Uh, you've got a lot of stuff that can, if your speakers can do it, can be displayed on the outside of the boundary of the speaker. So it was recorded really, really well to be able to do that. Got right and left, you know, imaging going back and forth. And for that, it's it was really, really impressive. And I enjoyed that aspect of it, as well as the drums a lot on this song. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm remembering it correctly, it's a shorter song too. I think it's maybe three to four minutes, somewhere along the lines, which for, for most is an average song, but for Tool, it's a short song. And then the last song I wanna talk about is gonna be Tempest. Now, Tempest is probably the most consistently upbeat track in this whole album, and it kind of is upbeat from, upbeat from start to finish, and it doesn't really have this weird rise over time like the other ones do. Um, it does because it's so energetic all the way throughout. It gets a little long in the tooth by the end and it's like, it's that 15 minute track I was talking about. You definitely kind of feel that 15 minutes by the end of it, um, but it's a good track. It's classic Tool sound, but yeah, it's a fun track. And I think that's gonna lead me into my conclusion. If you are a Tool fan, should you check this out? Yeah, I mean, it's a must. Um, it's one of the most consistent, especially with as big of a gap as they've had. It's one of the most consistent sounding um, kind of resurgence albums I've heard from any band whatsoever. When I said earlier that you could kind of shuffle those songs in with all their older songs and you would never be able to tell the difference to, you know, the uh, person who's, who doesn't know what the songs are. I mean that, and you could, you could throw them in anywhere. Nobody would know the difference. So this album as an overall album, I'm going to give this probably a nine out of 10. Um, I think for Tool fans, if you like the sound that Tool offers, this is gonna be an extremely familiar album and it's gonna be very, very enjoyable if you like that. However, not everybody loves Tool. So it's not gonna be that kind of shotgun recommendation where I think just everybody and their mother's gonna love it. It's definitely made for a specific audience. And if you fit that, you're gonna really enjoy yourself. All right guys, that's gonna be my breakdown for today. So I'll catch you guys in the next video, which will be, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> All right, peace.